Hear the buzzing? Oh. I think that's probably my phone ringing. Good morning. It is Wednesday again as we get into the lessons. And um, again, this is that third of a series of three miracles. Um, and Jack, I don't know if you really looked at, at this. If, if we look at the miracle of the daughter being healed... It really isn't a part of the story. <laughs> no, it wasn't. So, 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 okay. What do you? And again, I, I think we've been seeing this probably in all three. It's really stories. All three of them are stories of the miracle of faith. Yes. Yeah. It, not as much the first one with the feeding of the five thousand. But, but it does sort of show up with the reluctance of the disciples. Well, the faith, the people came to be healed. Okay, right, that's, right. You know. uh, but really, it really played out with Peter last week, and then the contrast with the woman this week. And, and what a great cr- contrast that, that, that is, because last week Peter was, oh, you of little faith. <laughs> this week we're going to get the woman of, oh, you of great faith. Uh, and, and so, you know, we, we've got to play with that. But, but there's a number of things that are going on through our readings today. And this really uh, amplifies that Christ's mission was for the whole world. Even though there are elements that come out in here where you, you wonder, but I think he was amplifying that. He was speaking that, that... Yes, there's a certain promise, but yes, there's a greater sense to that promise. And, and hopefully we'll pull some of those things out I, I think, for us I today. I think that's going to be obvious as we go through this. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's begin with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and gather around your word. Be in that word. Let that word resonate to us. Let your Holy Spirit... Uh, move it to mold and shape us, not only in our understanding, not only in our knowledge, but in our faith and, and living out and practicing that faith. And that's really where we're going today is is how does that faith get practiced? How does it get lived out? And so now, Heavenly Father, uh, just guide and lead us for our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, this, this is probably the first in a long time. Jack and I haven't spoken a word about these texts to one another. Uh, prior to normally, normally, yeah, normally we normally would talk just a little. We we normally compare a few notes uh, because we want to make sure we're going in the right direction. So this this could be very interesting today uh, if Jack goes off on the wrong direction. <laughs> just saying. Okay. okay, so in God's word, there's no wrong direction. There's just misinterpretation. No, in God's word, there is no wrong direction. But the ones that are doing God's word. <laughs> that's where that's where it can play out. Oh, you want to introduce the psalm? Sure. I know you want to introduce the psalm because you're going to say, let's go to Psalm 67. Yeah, and let's read the whole thing. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I gave you the opportunity. Yeah, psalm see. 67, verses 1 to 7. <laughs> see? Yeah. He thinks he knows me every once in a while. Yeah, uh, you know this is a very interesting psalm. Uh, you know, it, this is not an individual psalm as you read it. It's more of a corporate song, but it can also be taken personally and individually. Mm-hmm. But basically, it's corporate if you look at it. And right. uh, we'll we'll start at verse one. <laughs> That's a good place <laughs> to start. A good place to start. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make His face shine upon us, that Your way may be known on earth your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Okay. You know... What a, what a warm feeling you get, you know, uh, standing with others and, 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 and sharing with you and I and, and with the Facebook people here. And, you know, you know, be gracious to us. 
every one of us. You know, God is. 24-7. Right. Well, and, and, and you said, let's start with verse 1. If you don't start, if, if you tried to start somewhere else, this it, it really, all comes out of verse 1. It really You, you have to have verse 1. May God be gracious and bless us, make his face shine upon us. Oh, by the way, when you get the benediction at the end of the service, That's it. you get the same words flowing. Yeah. I mean, that is a benediction. It's a blessing. You could almost just stop right there. Yeah, you, you know, could because that is a benediction, you know, and that is a plea. Uh, but it, but but continuing on, I mean, you know, that that blessing goes back and forth. Well, and and right, his graciousness, his blessing, his face shining upon, creates what happens in two and following. Yes. You know, it, it it's it's from his graciousness, his blessing, his face shining that his way is is made known, and that his saving power is revealed among the nations you know because it's all him and that and that really leads into our other readings but you know if you look at this you know verse one god with us verse two all nations verses three through five all people praising god no 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 let me correct you on that one because uh -huh. because, because a commentary picked it up because there there are some translations that say the people the people but note notice in in the esv it's it the people the peoples. Okay. And and he said that's very significant. So it would be uh, God's be, peoples. No. Well, it'd still be all peoples because all all, all peop all peoples being believer and unbeliever. Well, somehow they praise God, whether they realize it or not. But especially think about where we're going today. Oh yeah. All think right. of where we're going. And, and and that and that's the important thing here that we've got to pick up. That your way may be known on earth, that your saving power among all nations. Nations is usually ethnos in the Greek in the which New Testament. Means everybody, which is which is really a, a sense of the Gentiles included in the that. Whole world, yep. and that's why and that's why uh, the the commentary said in verse three in some translations the S is left off. It's let the people praise you instead of peoples. And then it's amplified. Let all the peoples but, praise you. So yeah, in, in that sense, with, with that repeat there, it might be let all the peoples, the believers, praise you. But in addition, let all the peoples. Exactly. In other words, you know, the whole world. You know, and then and then it, it, when you get to the end, the last couple of verses, it talks about, you know, how he's God and we're not. Right. You know, <laughs> we sort of heard that last week. Yeah, kind of like okay. Yeah, and, and and so you get verse 4, let the nations be glad. Uh, you ju and, and, and this is why they should be glad. You judge with equity. You guide the nations. So yes, even even the pagan nations, even, you know, the nations that believe in Allah, they're being guided by God. God. <laughs> God's in control, so how could they not be? Right. You know, they may they may reject it, and and, and, and yes, they are rejecting it. I mean, they're real bulls in the china shop. Right. Okay? Right. Right. <laughs> well, and and uh, again, the, another neat thing that I would not have caught without the commentary is verse six. Verse six: The earth has yielded its increase. That's the only past tense verb in this psalm. That's, That's the only past action, right? Everything, and, everything else is a forward action. It is now and moving and, forward, and especially moving forward with all the shalls and wills and all that yes. in there. So, because of what because of what God has already done, we are blessed, and let us praise Him. That's it. Yeah. And to ultimately that last blessing when Christ returns. And how that ties into all the rest of these lessons is amazing. Right, right. Yeah. You got anything else there? No. Go ahead. We're going to Isaiah. Isaiah 56. Uh, this we, we do verse 1 and then we skip to verses 6 and 8. You get the fun one, the next one, because it's all scattered. It's all over the place. Romans yeah. is all scattered. But Isaiah 56... Uh, we start at verse 1, and then we hop down to verses 6 through 8. And really, um, I think verse 1 fits well with the psalm, but...
But six through eight now begins to develop the theme for the rest of the pulls it. for the rest of the lessons this Sunday. Yes, uh, we we pulled it out a little bit from the psalm, but it, it really starts uh, percolating down in verses six through eight. So uh, Isaiah fifty six one and six through eight. Thus says the Lord: Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come, and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. (laughs) Very interesting. Yeah. And if you back up a little bit and go back to chapter 55, verse 6, you know, you you can break down, you can break these all down, but 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And that really, you can see how it flows right into this. In verse verse 1, soon my salvation will come. And it will. And at that point, there there is no more seeking. It's, it's. There. Yeah. While he may be found. The Scud missile has landed. Yeah. (laughs) Don't don't be late. Right. And, and, And the reality, keep justice and do righteousness. You know, um. Do those things that live faithfully out. Right. The first 39 chapters of Isaiah speaks nothing but of justice and righteousness. Right. And then you get into the later chapters and it talks about salvation with righteousness. So, and now we get into this, you know, okay, where are we at now? Well, seek the Lord while he may be found and here we go. God's gathering up. Exactly. Exactly. You know? And and so you get you you know that his salvation will come. We, you know that his deliverance will be revealed, but it's not yet. Yeah. It, it, and and like in in Lutheran yeah. terms, we said it's the now, not yet. It has been revealed to us. It has. It has been revealed to us through Jesus Christ. And right. and as his word comes to us today, it constantly be is being revealed to us. His his salvation is coming to us. It's being his deliverance is being revealed to us through his word because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. But then there is that final revelation. Right. Oh, there's a book called that, isn't there? Revel- yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. That happens there's, to be the last there's, book. There's right? a, the, there is a book called that. But but now it's now not yet. And and that not yet means there is still time for his church, as we said last week, the those who are in the boat. Right. Because they were sent, they were sent to other places, and these are the other places where we're sent to we, the ones who are foreigners. Yeah, you know, and if you go back, you know, to, and look and reading the Old Testament, you know, they actually lost the idea of the foreigners as as being inclusive. They looked as them more of an outsider, an outcast, and even if they wanted to be part of the nation of Israel. They had to jump through hoops and were still kind of excluded in the outer courts. And, you know, and and here today, what do we do with our church? I mean, when we use the word foreigners, we think of other countries. But let's put it in the sense of the Old Testament. The foreigner is anybody outside our church. Right. Our physical church. Right. Okay. And, And what do we do for those? You know, whether they're believers or non-believers, we don't know. But they're outside our physical church. How how easy do we make it for them to become part of the church? Yeah, I mean, you know, do 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 we go to the jails? Do do we go to the to the places where they go for free meals? Or, uh, I mean, we kind of exclude ourselves. It, it seems to me there was a passage recently about how can they hear if they if nobody's speaking, if nobody's preaching it. You know, and. And right. the other end is how beautiful are my feet because I take the gospel right. and share it. Right. You know, I mean, 
I hope our feet are beautiful. I hope that we do. And I'm not talking about physical beauty. I'm talking about the God, word of God being. Exactly. You know, how, how when we take that to other people and, and, and whether they welcome us with open arms or reject our message, we're just a messenger. You know, let God's word do what God's word does. You know, and uh, we just have to be faithful and do the right thing. All right, I'm you're scrambling. Go, here. go ahead, keep keep <laughs> keep chattering because I, I because you know I just I, I think of you know what, what is a foreigner to me you know and and right off the bat I'm thinking other countries and think and the, no foreigners are those people in your neighborhood that you don't know or you may know and just don't don't share the word of God with you know you have to reach out. And be that witness. That's what we're called to do. If you ever want to know what is your purpose on earth, it's go ye therefore and you know, boot, you know, share the word of God just with all nations, all nations, all people. You know, we just can't can't just keep it to ourselves. Thank you for the time because it it popped in my head because you talked about the beautiful feet. Uh huh. Guess guess what. In the armor of God, in okay. Ephesians, uh, guess what the shoes are? I can't remember. Are they the bronze or the... They're, they're the gospel. They're the gospel. Okay. The the shoes the shoes in the armor of God are... The, the it, it sort of just popped in my head. Uh, okay. It's like, whoa, what a great connection. How beautiful are the feet? And, and it's the shoes it's, of the armor of God that are the gospel. The gospel. Exactly. The so, sword is the word. Yeah. Yes. Oh gosh. Yes. So, uh, getting back, getting back to Isaiah on that little scavenger hunt there. Um, <laughs> so, know. so yeah. N- now, now, now we get to the ones that uh, need to hear. The ones who are the Gentile, the foreigner. Uh, they make up all the nations, the ethnos, uh, and, and and how how glorious it is when those foreigners do join themselves to the Lord. And and look at the response. They they minister to him. They become his servants. They love the name. They keep the Sabbath. They hold the covenant. Yeah. But the the promise in seven, that they will be brought to the holy mountain. You know, holy mountain. You know, last week's lessons and and this week's lessons, Jesus, you know, he he goes up to the mountain to pray. Right. You know, the holy mountain, you know, is that talking about the new Jerusalem as it comes down, as we read in Scripture? Is that talking uh, the holy mountain? Is that talking about right now, our here and now, how God lifts us up spiritually? I mean, that holy mountain is where God is, and and we're there. Right. Well, and 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 again, this the now, not yet. We are there every Sunday when we gather together and worship. We're there on the holy mountain, but yes, there is that sense of the the future in eternity yes. being on the holy mountain, the Zion, right? So to speak, the Mount Zion that we await, and and again uh, on that holy mountain, uh, we become part of that house of prayer. Yeah, joyful, right? In that house of prayer. Oh, and by the way, yeah, at the end of seven, it's the yeah. house of prayer for all peoples. Yeah. Back, back to everyone again, yeah. all nations, and and finally, then he gathers the outcasts, hmm. and, and he gathers others besides those. So yeah. he's working and he's working and he's working and he's working. And oh yeah, by the way, who does he work through? <laughs> Hello, um, <laughs> wake up, smell the roses, right? Right. You know, uh, so, so he's he's giving us this time. Uh, in order to reach the outcast, and, and and again, how often in my life I've already framed a certain prejudice before I ever approach the outcast. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, I'm I'm going into these places where these people, these people, exactly. You know, that's a mindset. You know, right? It's not. It's not. I'm going into the to a place where I get to share the gospel, where I can help these people, hopefully, and, and share the word of God so that God will open their hearts. I can be the tool that God uses to go. gather. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, interesting, though, um, you know, 
in, in verse 7 it says, you know, at the end there, for my house should be called a house of prayer for all peoples. I, that refers back to Luke. In Luke chapter 19, verse right. 46, where Jesus quotes, it is written, my house should be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. You know, what do we do? How do we treat, how does our people, our congregation, how do you and I, you know, well, these people. Right, and, and it, goes, know, it goes again as how, how easy or, or how difficult do we make it for when people come. Exactly. To be included, you know, yeah. Uh, or, or, or do we have biases or prejudices that we already put up? Oh no, another Floridian. <laughs> oh, those those children, they're they're going to be a little antsy, and they're going to create too much noise bouncing around in the sanctuary. Yeah. By the way, I'm a Floridian, so there's no offense there. <laughs> I once was. <laughs> But, but yeah, now I you're mean, found. Now, now, yeah, you were right. lost, but now you're found. Uh, now I'm found, you know. And how beautiful is it up here to be, you know, in this place, you know, uh, in, in a time of life where I can just sit back and, and, and say, okay, God, what do you want me to do now? Right. I'm not in the rat race. Uh, you know, I can do more things. And, and, and hopefully, you know, God will give me direction. And continue to guide me in, in what he wants me to do. Well, and, you know? and, and I know part of the difficult difficulty is, you know, there there are a number of Christians that are awaiting the, the state of Israel to gain back power again, which, which is a faulty, uh, again, it, it's sort of that faulty thinking that, you know, God came for Israel. Exactly. And and and, but he did the new Israel. What, but he, the fulfilled Israel. But I think I think we're we're getting and and as we'll see in the gospel, uh, the disciples are going to get an expanded view of what that is. Exactly. B because as Isaiah is dealing with it here, uh, Isaiah is still being the instrument of God to call Israel back. But when we finally get to the gospel. Israel has left. Israel, yeah, gone, gone. Israel has left because Jesus comes. Jesus is the new Israel. And, and so we, we see a different thing being played out there. And especially with Romans, there's sort of a, a twist, a topsy-turvy yeah. as yeah. things go uh, when we get to that. But, you know, as this really sets it out is... And I and when we get to uh, uh, Romans, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Genesis because there's some things in Genesis that we need to talk about. That, yes. Um, but at this point in Isaiah and with the Psalm, Israel is the chosen. Israel, as as it was configured in the Old Testament, we get a reshaping of that after Jesus comes because Jesus is the new Israel because the Israel from the Old Testament has rejected. Yes. Yeah, and, and people get that confused because they, 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 you have to separate, you know, Israel is, is, is the nation as, as a heritage, uh, you know, or is Israel the nation as far as faith, you know, the, the following, that, that remnant, if you would. The remnant was always there. Right. You know. And that comes out a little bit in Romans. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of. Let's move to it. All right. Romans, Romans 11. And we're going to jump around a little bit. We'll start with verse 1. Read a little bit of verse 1 and 2. And then we jump to 13 through 15. And then we jump again to 28 to 32. So, yeah. <laughs> you going to read all of this as one or are we going to break it up? Uh, I think I'll read it all as one and then we'll go back. Okay. Because it does kind of give you a, a full thought. Um, right, right, yeah. Uh, you know. But, you know, we're, we're looking at the Old and New Covenants as we go through this. So, yeah, uh, we'll start at verse 1. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I, am, now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch that I am apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. 
For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance, acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as regards for election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of, his, because of their disobedience, so they too, <clears throat> excuse me, they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they may also now receive mercy. For God has considered all, all, has consigned all. Yeah, has, excuse me, for all, yeah. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. Yeah. There, there's some rough understanding on that last section, so we'll we'll deal yeah. with that when well, we I come, actually put in some to it. brackets in there to get my thoughts, and I almost read those instead. Okay. Of just, but let, yeah, let, let's it, go back to the beginning. Yeah, this is ties in the old covenants, the new covenants. It's 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 pulling it all together, you know. Uh, rejected the people by no means. You and, know? and and the interesting thing that that Paul isn't saying there is. God hasn't rejected them. They rejected they him. They rejected him. You know, <laughs> God hasn't, because you almost missed that point. You know, God doesn't reject anybody. No. He, he sent his son for all. I mean, God so loved the world. And if you look at that, just that, and, and, and say, okay, wait a minute, God so loved the world. The world is inclusive of everyone. Right. Everyone, right? Not just, right? Yeah, and and he even you know puts out his his you know biography again. Uh, I'm an Israelite. I'm a descendant of Abraham. I'm a tribe of Benjamin. He uses that later on. Yeah. He's he basically saying I'm I'm the Jew of all Jews. Uh, God has not rejected His people whom He foreknew, and that gets us to those Genesis passages. Okay. Uh, see if I can find them here. Uh, Genesis twelve. Three is is the call to Abraham. I will, you know, it, it starts in two. I will make of you a great nation, great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. So we heard that in the psalm, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless, bless you, you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you, all oh. the families of the earth will be blessed. The earth. Right, the earth. right, and then and then it it pops up again in Genesis twenty two with the sacrifice of Isaac. Twenty two, uh, verse seventeen, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Again, inclusive. Everyone. Right. And and so, you know, you know we got to hearken back to, is this just an Israel thing? They, they thought it was, <laughs> you know, and, and they missed, and they missed the triune God, you know, mm -hmm. they, and, you know. Can you fault them for missing it, or was this God's design? Some of it, you know. I mean, because you know, the, the, not everything was revealed to all people. Look at the time of Christ, and and they, the the prophecies were all there, but they weren't revealed. You, you know, the answer you you remember what you just the question you just asked was it their fault or was it God's design? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes, he foreknew the people. Oh, that's that's in there, right? Whom he foreknew, right? You know. And, well, and 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 as now he moves to speaking to the Gentiles. Yes, Be, because because now the hope for the blessing switches hands. This this is where it gets topsy turvy yeah. because the hope for the blessing now is in the in the hands of the Gentiles. Yeah, if if if. Paul hadn't gone to the Gentiles. Now, he went to the Jews first. Right. Okay. And they reject, and then he goes to the Gentiles. Now, if, and, and think about the Jews 
who accepted and became Christians, okay, and how they were still very strong in their traditions and right. customs, you know, and I want to think about, it, it just pains me to say the word circumcision. I mean, th the right. thought of that, right. you know, uh, you know, it's one thing as a baby to have it, you know, you say, well, right. you know, you don't remember it, but another thing as an adult who, right. who is called to faith and says, okay, now what do I have to do? Well, I need to be baptized. Okay, I can do that. Uh, circumcision, let me think about uh, that one a little bit. Baptism, not always, you know, because again, I, I just had an opportunity, uh, that I was asked to marry a couple uh, this coming weekend, and I said I told them one of one of the two of the things that I require with with uh, to perform the ceremony is number one they have to have premarital counseling. Right. They received it some from somebody else, so I was good. But then the other requirement is that both of them are baptized. Okay. One of them was not, and so they chose not to. Really have me they they were going to go another route another avenue and that's fine because really when i perform a marriage i'm i'm just i'm just doing the government service well yes if, if that, that's really in the eyes of the state but i i i it's, make it more than you that. make it more i make it i make in, it more in than the eyes that. of god it's you know correct we got the scriptural mandate and and, and so and the whole point of this, we do the same thing with the church. You you brought it up earlier. Are there hoops that have to be jumped through? Yes. Yeah. But but do we make the hoops the primary point? No. No. I mean, it's like someone coming to our church, and if you want to be a member, you go through the new member class. Right. Okay. And or you, you get want, baptized. Or you get baptized. But if you don't want to be baptized or become a member... The doors are still open. You can come here and worship, right? You know, and, and, and right. Well, and and so we move into this. And I, I love now. I'm speaking to you, Gentiles, because he knows the 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 hope. Uh, what we were saying before. Now, now that that word to declare is in their hands, um, and, and I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to make a bigger deal of, of of going to the Gentiles because I might catch the attention of of a few of those guys. Oh, he definitely got their attention. Yeah, <laughs> some of it not, not always not, for the favorable. right reason. Right, not right, favorable. right, right. You right. know, but you know, just because they were of the nation of Israel, and I'm speaking of the nation as ethnicity. Right. Okay. Does not make them the new Israel. Yeah. It, you know. I have a hard time with the word new Israel. Uh, it's really not the new Israel. It was the chosen Israel from, I mean, from very beginning. Right. That remnant. Well, it goes back to the promise of Abraham. All nations will be blessed. You know, that is the nation of Israel. But, but by faith, not by birth. Right. Right. See? And and Paul brings that out in, yeah. in, in places, uh, in, especially in Romans, that it, that it is by faith. And so, yeah. you know, and again, it, it but, was, it, you know, he knows that they received faith because of what the Jews did in their rejection. Right. It caused the Gentiles to receive the faith. Now he's hoping that the, the yeah. shoe gets put on the other foot. You know, he goes to the Gentiles, you know, he, he baptizes them. They receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Uh, they're, they're doing things. They're they're sharing. There's got to be jealousy there. There's got to be. What happens with jealousy though? You know. And then when I read that, make my Jews jealous. And I'm thinking, I've never looked at jealousness or jealousy as a favorable good thing. And generally, as a result of that, you have hard feelings, and your heart gets more hardened. It's it's not generally a favorable thing. Well, I think I think he's praying that God would use it. But I'm for, thinking, yeah, I know, I know that's where he's going with right. that. But I'm like, Ugh. because aren't yeah. there? Are, and and I know I've experienced, and I'm sure you've experienced. Aren't there times when you need to be stirred in a not so good way? Oh yeah. In order for God to get your attention, <laughs> and I think that's 
that's a little bit of what we're going to see in the gospel lesson is I, I think God had to stir the disciples to see that this whole kingdom thing was much yeah. bigger than their narrow yeah. and, 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 and you really you're hitting on it with the Jews is their narrow minded concept of what the kingdom is. What the king you know, they are the chosen people. Right. They that's I obey it's, the they, rules and the regulations. Yeah. And and so I'm good. And and what's happening Well that takes us back to uh oh what was that? Keep justice and do righteousness. Right. You know, keep justice and do righteousness. Okay, it, it, can you fault everything they were taught from from day one? And, and how do you give all that up? Well, you have to understand the fulfillment of it. Not and and isn't it great when you see somebody who has not been a person of faith when they when they come in and they get it because <laughs> be, because. They had none of that. They they hadn't warped it, yeah. and so when they get it, they see the beauty of it, and then you then you get to be in the church for long enough. You begin to yeah. putting your your coats of paint on it, right. so to speak, and, and and like Jesus said about the uh, the Pharisees, you whitewash your tombs. Yeah, you know, you yeah. put a fresh coat of paint on it. It's not making it any better. You know, and sometimes you know that 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 brand new. Christian, if you would, someone who comes and and, and 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 just you know the spirit just fills them and, and calls them to faith and you know yeah they have a long ways to go, but their eyes of innocence it's like well, why don't we do this or why don't we do that where we have tried those things and given up on them, they come in with that vitality. Well, let's give it a shot, and sometimes that's a shot in the arm for us, right? Well, and, and and then moving moving into twenty, the last section which is so heavy, I had to, I had to look up some of these words <laughs> because the way they made me think, it was like that doesn't make sense. But you know, go and and we're going to just walk through these verse by verse as regards to the gospel. They are enemies of God for your sake, because again, as as they were enemies of God, it it forced the gospel to be preached, be preached to, out to other places. Exactly. So, so, so when they became enemies of God, then the gospel was taken to other places, and, and this comes back to the heritage again. But as but as regards but as regards to election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. They still have a hope. They still have a hope. They that, still have a hope and a promise because of what was God given. gave his word. And he doesn't right. break his word. And that's what the next verse talks about. Exactly. Exactly. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. irrevocable. Not that you know, not that they're that we can't give them up. He doesn't give them up. He doesn't. He, he gives those gifts. You get those gifts. Yeah. You can choose to reject them. Which the Jews did, exactly. Which Christians do. You can choose. They're they're irrevocable. God's given them. You know, yeah. and 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 the other, the other way it could be translated: the gifts and the calling of God are not to be regretted. God doesn't regret giving them to us. Although, no, although, I, I although, remember the time of Noah. I don't know. He doesn't regret giving them to us because that's salvation. Well, he doesn't that's... regret giving them to us. Okay. He doesn't regret giving them to us. Does it sadden him sometimes? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> but he doesn't regret giving them okay. to us because, you know... I don't know. I think that's they are, they are they are the cause of salvation. Well, they are. They um, are the cause of salvation. And, and now he puts the shoe on the other foot. For just as you were at one time disobedient, and oh yeah, by the way, you were shown mercy, but now have received mercy. Yeah. Because of their disobedience, yeah, they need you. Now you know it's that it's that newbie it's, Christian. It's, it's, now you now you know what mercy is. Go to them because Go they to need them. to know. They because, need to know what mercy is again. Yeah, because they are the outsider. Correct. You know. Correct. You know. Yeah. We have, we have, you know the fulfillment. God's given us this. You know, He's He's fulfilled or uh, everything through Christ. Right. You know. And I just want to be clear. I'm not saying once saved, always saved. Here. No. 
No. Not, I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. You can reject it. But if you reject it, can you get it back? Yes. I, I believe so, but the, I, I, again, I, I, that's... The, because the word of God kind of goes that he, way, he, 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 and other places it goes the other way. So. He, he's, he's saying but, you but can right get it back here. here. But right here, he's he saying says you can get yes. for 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 God has consigned all to disobedience. It's like the only thing I could think of a consigned was a consignment shop. It's yeah, like, right. And it was like okay, and 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 what that term means is confined or imprisoned. You're imprisoned to it. You. you this is by na we are by nature sinful and unclean we, and, and, and enemies and, of God. We are shackled. Women. We are shackled with our sinfulness. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we can't shut it. We can't break it free. Right, right. We're we're yeah. struggling with it. We're we're not under its power anymore. No, but we are under its influence. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and it does. And again, it goes back to last week when I when I I think it was in the sermon where I, I talked about the two pictures that my friend gave oh, me before yeah. the seminary, God this, and not God. God, not God. And that's really what this passage. Yeah. We're confined to disobedience to remind us. Guess what? You're not God. Exactly. But exactly. But that He may have mercy on us, so that yeah. we can see God, who God is, and what He does for us. That He blesses us. Yeah. You know, and just. Anything else that you've got there? Well, just the, the, there's a you know the definite distinction of being Jewish as ethnicity and being being the new Israel, or you know, um, and it just kind of brought these verses kind of brought to the mind uh, Matthew twenty one, where it says, "Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to the people who produce its fruits." Yeah. You know, I mean, in, in the, we are in the last time, so I want to say call, he's calling them to produce fruits here, call, and he's saying, you know, this is what this is it. Get out here, you know. Yes, we were blessed because they rejected. Now we need to be the blessing to them. Exactly. You know, we exactly the shoes on the other foot. What right. are we going to do with it? Right. You know, is God going to look at us any different than He looked at the nation of Israel and our failings? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, you get Matthew twenty-five, where you know, when I was in prison, you visited me. When I was yeah. sick, you cared for me. Yeah, yeah, you got all that. But you know, that verse is kind of a great lead into the this reading in Matthew. Yeah, Matthew fifteen yeah. twenty-one to twenty-eight. Uh, another very fa favorite passage. Uh, there's some interesting things in here. Uh, I'll let I'll give you a little insight in my sermon on Sunday. I'm, I'm I'm going to focus in on verse 23. Uh, as I was reading through the commentaries, um, something jumped out about verse 23, and, and it's one that probably people struggle with uh, uh, when you hear it. So, uh, Matthew 15, 21 through 28, And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold... A Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly <laughs> very interesting test uh, oh, well yeah. and, and, and I mean and just well just a, just a geographical note here is you know the last couple of weeks we, we were right, right around the Sea of Galilee right with the feeding of the 5,000 and then they got in the boat they were on the Sea of Galilee 
Tyre and Sidon are a good piece. A good it's piece. a fur piece <laughs> from, from the Sea of Galilee. It, it, so, it, so they've moved on. They've moved on. This is all new setting, you know. And then you get this Canaanite woman, okay. Uh, okay, she's a Gentile. I mean, we, we've got to say that right off the well, bat. Well, and, and Tyre and Sidon is Gentile territory. It is. So, so yeah. it, it's sort it's, of like it's... For us up here in Blairsville, if we go down to Atlanta, yeah, we're 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 in we're in foreign territory. We are. We're, you know. we're out of the familiar climbs. So, um, you know, and 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 getting to what we've been talking about is they left that Jewish comfort comfort zone, and, and now they're going into the and and, and that's kind of like a, a you know he says. I mean, if you read the text, I have come for the you know the house of Israel. Oh, don't jump there yet. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. But here they are in a Gentile territory, right? And it's kind of like, okay, well, you're stretching the boundaries, you know. And then you got this Canaanite woman, you right? Know, right. And she comes and she's crying. She's crying. She's humbling herself, if you would. It's probably the same sense of crying out as we saw with the disciples. In the boat last week, when they see you know, it is a ghost, it is a ghost. But, al but also Peter, when he's sinking, yeah. he cries out. He cries out to the Lord. So you it's know, that same sense of crying out. It's, 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 it's like despair. Despair. And, and, and saying, O oh Lord, Son of David, she knew who he was. She knew who he was. And that crying out, like you're saying, it's like, Lord, save me. With, you know, with, and, and the real and and again we can't answer this question as I've been looking at the commentaries with this is how much did she know about him we don't know she knew she, enough she knew, to say that she knew something she knew enough you know it's that uh, the the mustard seed faith yeah she knew enough to identify who he was and oh yeah by the way uh, how often did the pro the disciples have problems with identifying who he was yeah. but but also at the same time I, I also looked up son of David and how many times I. It get it gets used the most times in Matthew's gospel. Matthew, yeah. But 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 it's interesting that when you go and look at the people who say "Son of David," you get blind people, you get demons. Uh, yeah. And, you, you, and, and it and it's interesting that it's the many times the the outcast or the Gentile. It's definitely a tie back to David. Oh, it, it, you know, I mean, there's there's no. Okay, well, if you're the son of David, then it's almost like saying you're the Messiah. It's, exactly. You know, I mean, it's exactly. that. Exactly. And, and, and so she, even, you're right. She she knows something. She knows something. And just to say, oh, Lord, that oh, Lord right there is, you know. And how many times does she say it in this text? Oh. She says it three times. Yes. You know, like, Lord, 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 you know. Yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Here we go. Right. Uh, and then you get to verse 23. Jesus, re here, here, she's crying out in despair. But she's crying out for her daughter, not herself. But she's crying out. In yes. When Jesus, when Jesus was in the boat, and and he, and he he saw the crowd, what was his response before the feeding of the five thousand? He yeah. saw the crowd and, and had compassion. compassion on them. Yes. But here, he, she's crying out right in his ear. And, and he's silent. He doesn't say anything. You know, sometimes and, and, God is silent. And I'm going to play with that on Sunday with the with you know, the sermon is the silence of God. You know, God. Do we feel that way right now that God is being silent? In some ways, yes. You know, but the irony here is that God, Jesus, is being silent, but his disciples are not. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> you know, one contrast to the other, you know. But it's the same thing they said with the feeding of the 5,000. You know. Send them away. Send them away. Send, Send her away. Send away. Send her away. La, 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 la. I don't want to hear what she has to say anymore. It's, yeah. Jesus is silent. Right. It's just, oh. Right. So, so you get this. What seems to be a contradictory behavior out of Jesus and remaining silent. But see, when I read that, I figured that was a lesson on faith. Well, and, and this becomes what we have to read into this text is what, it, what is Jesus trying to do here? And I think really Jesus is doing two things. He's going to minister. He, 
He knew from her first cry who she was and what was he, going. He was going to minister to her. Yeah. But I think in the same regard, he's setting the disciples up here. And, and, and it's really where we've been going with this series of texts is that he wants them to be sure that they don't fall back into the, the narrow view of what the kingdom is. It's, it's, well, it's for the Jew only. But that's been what they've been taught all their life. This is all new to them. Yeah. You've got to, to break that barrier down. And, 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 and I think it's still being broken down today. And, 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 and his first, and when he finally does speak, again, he says something that we're going, whoa, whoa. You know, yeah. I came only for the lost sheep. Of the house of, of the Israel. house of Israel. The house of Israel. You know, that's an interesting term. Well, and 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 I've got a I've got a different way to translate that that reads okay. a little bit. Go, so go ahead with your house of Israel, and well, then I'll tell you a different way to translate well, it. The house of Israel. When I when I read that, I'm thinking, okay, house is all inclusive. Okay, so the house of Israel is not necessarily. It's it's. It's all those who have, all right, I'm going to say including the foreigners who have become Jewish is what I'm trying to say. Okay. okay? It, it, it's, it's inclusive of, but. It's, but it's still Jewish. It's still Jewish. It's still Jewish. It includes the foreigners. And, and that's the interesting thing here because typically when we hear this, we're thinking he's offending her. But he's not. He's not. He's offending them. them. It's an insult. B because I was sent only to the lost sheep who are the house of Israel. He's not calling her a lost sheep. He's calling the Jews the lost yeah. sheep. Yeah. They've, they've missed it. They've rejected me. So yes, exactly what you're saying. It's all those people who have, who have come together collectively in that Jewish faith. Jewish faith. He's saying... Those are the ones that I'm offending yeah. here. I, I, I'm the fulfillment of the law. I'm going to fulfill the righteousness. I'm yeah. going, you know. And so this gets back to that Romans text with saying, when, when now he, Paul is saying, I'm coming to you Gentiles because they need you. They need you. To exactly. be shown mercy. And be that's how these tie together. It, right. It's so, it's, right. Because you don't see that unless you study it. Right. You'll gloss right over it. And then, and then the third offense, the third offense, so, you know, typically as we read this, the first offense is Jesus doesn't say anything, he doesn't respond to her, he just ignores her. Second offense that we typically read is, oh, I've come only for Israel. And, and hopefully we've cleared that up a little bit. Right, because that's a, that's a mislead. The, the, yeah. the third offense is... He calls her a dog. A dog. <laughs> he calls her a dog. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there you go, Jesus. <laughs> it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> I mean, you know. That could have been a title, <laughs> but, but it's not. It's not. And, 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 and again, what you have to see here is the comparison Jesus is making. And again, Jesus is making that comparison between the old promise and the new promise, the old covenant and the new covenant, the old Israel, the new Israel, because yes, that promise is still there. They they still are the children. And, and when you start thinking biblically, especially with the Old Testament, the first thing that ran, and, and I don't know what you found in your notes, but the first thing that ran to my mind when I heard children's bread I thought of the manna that was given to them in the desert. Okay. God's provision, God's almighty provision in, in the midst of their trouble, in the midst of their pain. Uh, he, he's bringing this out again that, you know, the the children have been given this bread. Right. And, and, and why cast it to the dogs? And, oh, yeah, by the way... Th th this would be a domesticated dog. Some commentaries dispute this, really? but but with with what I've read and, and I, I went back into my Greek dictionary, it is 
It's it's your house pet. It's going to be a house it, pet. It, it, I mean, he's talking it's, about the dogs it's, that grow up. It's from little the Sam at our house. Yeah, right. It, it, he's he's domesticated. He's because he's inside the house. That that's that's the clue yeah. is that he's inside the house at the master's feet underneath the table, just waiting for something to fall off. Right. So 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 the 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 term is not as derogatory as you could think. Because guess what? As with you all who have dogs, is the dog part of the household? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what we need to back up. And, and I was reading some of the comments here. Uh, you know, I was sent only to the, you know, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, when, when we talk about that, we're talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees who are so steep in the law that they think, and if we go back to the earlier readings, you know, by by fulfilling the law, they become righteous. Right. Okay. Or, or by being born into born it. Born into it. Yes. You know. All right. So we've got that. You know, that is an insult. You know, Jesus is is actually throwing that out. Now he's throwing that out in Tyre and Sidon, which there's probably not a lot of Jewish uh, followers there, right. but they would get that, I would think. Uh, what do you mean? I'm not a lost sheep. You know, and then we talk about you know the children's bread and crumble, you know, crumbs from the table to the to the dogs, a domesticated dog, if right. you would. Uh, obviously, if it's under a table, it's a domesticated dog. But, but she knew her place. But she did know her place, as opposed to Peter last week. You know, Peter last week didn't know his place. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Lord, command me to let me. Let, right, I'm God, you're not. Let me tell you what to do. Right. Uh, you know, she knew her place. You know, and then and she even humbled herself. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. You know, so there she making the allusion to Lord again. Yeah, yeah, right. She's tying it together. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, and 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 and, and so uh, again, remember, it's the Lord's work here, not her work. She didn't earn anything. She didn't gain anything. It, it was her faith. But again, the work of faith is not ours. The work of faith is the Holy Spirit moving through us. Right. And, and so Peter, uh, so Jesus responds to her, "Oh woman, great is your faith." When last week, <laughs> Peter was told, "How little is your faith?" Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, so a, a great contrast because again, as we just said, Peter was saying, "I'm God. Let me take your spot." She realizes I'm not God, and and yeah. I need your help. You know, Lord, help me. Yeah. Well, that Lord help me. Uh, back in verse twenty-five, you know that that word Lord is curios, the right. supreme authority. Right. So she knows. I mean, she's called him Son of David. She's called him, you know, the supreme authority. She knows who he is. You know. And 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 it's a constant profession of faith. If, and if you go back up in chapter 15 to verses 8 and 9, Jesus sort of, lay, you know, get back to the scribes and the Pharisees and, and, and the religious leaders. He or she has a profession of faith, and Jesus has just talked to the Pharisees about their lack of it. In verses 8 and 9, where he quotes uh, Old Testament, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And she, he just speaks that to them, and now you get this image of the person who is outside of that properly worshiping. Properly, yes. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know faith is the key here. Right. You know, uh, now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, you know, and the convictions of things not seen. You know, we just, we just go forward, right? You know, and then, and then I read Ephesians. You know, for by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not your own doing; it is the gift of God, mm -hmm. not a result of works, that no one may boast. You know, I can't boast about my faith. I can boast about Jesus Christ and what He's done for me. Right. Okay, and and everything that He continues to do through me, yeah, or for me. You know, but not not my actions. It's Him. Right. It's what he's doing. Right, right. And, 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 you know, again, sometimes we need those moments of silence 
to be reminded of our place. Uh, uh, yeah, and, I mean, and, and to be remi- to be reminded as this woman realized is, you know, I'm not worthy of any of this. Uh, you know, I I don't deserve it. But she also knew that even if she got a crumb, it was going to be more than more than enough. Yeah. You know, it, it's again as I preached last uh, two weeks ago with the feeding of the five thousand is our meager gifts put in the hands of the master are abundant, yeah. and, and and so. She's realizing that that yeah, I, I just give me a crumb, just just, just, just give, give me a crumb, and and and, and again, I, I think sometimes we get a. Sometimes we need just a crumb. And, and well, no more. sometimes we demand more. We demand more attention. We demand more, 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 oh, more, and and, and 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 right, and and Jesus, and Jesus tells us, I've given you some crumbs. My crumbs are enough. Um, yeah. And, and, and instead of us, and and so yeah, when we go to the table, do we eat a whole loaf of bread and a gallon of wine? <laughs> no, we have a little wafer and a sip of wine. His his little bit, his crumbs is more than enough. are more than enough. Do we drown a person with baptism? No, we sprinkle them. It's more than enough. Yeah. We can immerse, we can sprinkle, we can pour, but... And, and finally with this woman, how much, how much did she know about Jesus? Who knows? <laughs> Only by the word. But, but it, it was a crumb. It was, it was, it was a, a crumb. crumb. Her it, was faith, a, it was enough. Her faith. It was enough. Yeah. And so really, the, the yeah. crumb that she was asking for, she had already received. You know, I just, you know... Oh, woman, I mean, wouldn't it be great if Jesus said this to all of us? Oh, put your name there. Great is your faith. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great is your faith. And oh, yeah, the faith of a mustard seed. Yeah, right? Just, just a little bit. <laughs> Let's close with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again uh, as, as we see this story. We, we see ourselves in it. Uh, we, sometimes we're the disciples who are telling for people to get away. To leave, sometimes we're the woman uh, who 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 experience the silence, who are just in need of of being reminded of, of of what you give us, and and sometimes sometimes we demand far more than than what we really need. So heavenly Father, in this time, uh, just fill us, give us those things that we need in order to live out our faith. So that great is our faith, and so as we live out that great faith, we can then be sent to others who need to be shown mercy. So guide us and lead us and direct us uh, for the rest of this week until we gather in worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.